Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you happen to see this, uh, I would like to offer your elemental energy reading for the month of December for the elemental sign of fire. Fire covers the zodiac signs of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So if you're an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or you have fire high up in your chart, then this one's for you. And if you don't, you might still get something out of it. You never know. Uh, if you've never had your charts read in the description, down below there is a link to a natal chart. It is a really good resource. It gives you um, the full chart with all the little house placements and everything. And then it's 10 to 20 pages of a description of what all that means. And it also includes your elemental alignment. So it gives you quite a bit of really good information. It's just a basic birth chart, but they give you everything else with it. So it's actually a really good deal. Uh, and if you're interested in any of the books or cards I'm using, link to the description. Um, with that, we'll get started with our I Ching hexagram I cast before the reading. So for fire for December of 2024, we have number 25, which is integrity and the unexpected. Integrity, sublime success, righteous persistence brings reward. Those opposed to righteousness meet with injury. It is not favorable to have in view any goal or destination. There's kind of feeling this vibe of going with the flow this month. Let things happen as they may. You've been doing some work and now it's time to kind of stay true to the word that you say if you say it then do it <laughs> um, but also be open to the uh, mysterious the unexpected that magical part of the universe where you have a goal and the universe is like let's make this a fun trip <laughs> so be open to that kind of energy is what i'm hearing but also very, they're wanting to just reiterate the fact if you say something that's your word your word is your binding contract type thing integrity loosely for <laughs> most of the people I know it means doing the right thing when no one is looking so definitely sticking to your um, morals and ethics this month the bottom line our foundation here moving onward with integrity brings good fortune you have your goals you have your dreams you have your plans ahead of you stay focused on those keep moving towards them fire and everything's gonna be all right it might take a little detour here and there that's that unexpected magic but it's definitely worth staying true to yourself your morals your ethics but also staying true to that goal as well our second place line do not calculate the size of the harvest while plowing is still in progress nor gloat over the third year's crop while planting the first year it is favorable to seek some object or destination right now when they say object or destination they're not saying searching out the future you can't really plan that you can go to, you know set a goal towards it and you can make the next steps but don't get ahead of yourself is the key point here and when it says it's favorable to seek some outcome or, or object or destination they're saying in this moment you're plowing the the virgin fields your first year crops you're getting everything set up now so your destination your uh, goal at this point should be what's your next step not that big goal which is you know five ten whatever years down the road you're not going there yet so don't don't brag about that just yet you're still here so do what's in front of you and plan accordingly our third place line unexpected calamity someone ropes an ox and leads it off a gain to the passer by but a loss to the farmer who owns it this is basically saying if things go awry, if things kind of veer off course, or you feel like somebody is trying to sabotage you, take a breath, double check. Is it really that, was that really what's going on? Or is this a universe kind of readjusting where you're headed? Because you might be headed the wrong direction and this is this little detour, this little hip bump, so to speak, could be the reason that to be readjusted. So stay open to possibilities this month is the big key that I'm hearing with that. Your fourth place line, something can be accomplished by righteous persistence and no error is involved. Again, hold with integrity, 
keep your big goal in place look at the next step and plan accordingly when it says righteous persistence it's not really a religious thing they're saying righteous persistence as in you're staying honest with yourself you're looking at what's actually in front of you and you're working that direction working with your guides god source divine because that's where the magic comes in that's where the unexpected really sets foot but you are doing your part by paying attention and they're also saying your intuition could be very valuable during the hiccup period so definitely listening to that your fifth place line unexpected illness but it was best not to treat it just because things go squirrely which does happen <laughs> it does not mean that you have to immediately recorrect it and fix it right this second it's saying it's not best it's best not to treat it if things shift if things change that's the loop de lose in the path to your goal stay focused on the goal allow this to reconcile itself it could be the fact that you needed a little tap on the shoulder to slow down maybe you're pushing really super hard have to reach goal by end of year universe is like you'll get there calm down <laughs> but the energy is definitely like if something comes up and it's that little nudge to slow down pay attention to that because that's the best option for that time your capstone here if it is unexpected a journey now would be injurious this is a time favorable for those with no destination in view this month fire do not focus so much on getting to said destination don't focus so much on achieving the big goal the big goal is there as something to shoot for to reach for to continue to strive for that's the purpose of the big goal it does not mean that you have to go out and beat it up today you may not achieve it by December 31st they're saying that it's a possibility but don't be upset if it that doesn't happen because that's not that's not what's in the cards for you to so to speak it's definitely a time to go with the flow see how things play out uh, stay true to yourself true to your mission but if you have that little hip bump to slow down if you have that little redirection work with that because the universe is saying not everything's gonna go exactly in a straight line this month it's definitely gonna have some loop de loos so see what kind of interesting fun magical stuff can happen this month um, now let's hop over to our tarot and I read intuitively so um, the messages that come through may or may not be exactly what's on the cards because that doesn't always work out anyway um, there are approximately four and a half weeks in December so we'll do a five week read I read week to week and each week there is a guide or guardian something to help guide you through the week or a guardian to help you deal with the hiccups that show up a message from source a positive reinforcement encouragement or however that manifests um, and then there's a lesson or a challenge from the tarot where we look at a lesson to work on or maybe something unexpected popping up that month or that week and I read one two three four five for the weeks but if they happen to manifest a little bit different for you then work with what comes forward the messages are just being brought through in a general state so take what works and leave the rest for someone else your first guide or guardian this deck is one I'm still adjusting to so I may have to read out of the book for on some of this we have number 20 Lord Kathumi and I'm feeling that there's gonna be a teaching aspect to this card there's some energy of growth and maturity is what I'm hearing intuitively but let's see what the little book here if I can find the page <laughs> Uh, do, 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 do. Not 25, 20. We are, there we are. Lord Kathumi um, lost no time informing anyone who he is. He is a dragon elder, a spokes dragon for the Galactic Council. If you desire to be able to hold energies of the fifth and seventh dimension, this is the dragon you're going to need guidance from. So, what else do we got here? He will help you clear all your earthly woes and fears uh, and your deep need for control. 
your light body will be in alignment with those in the earth and the astrological light matrix. So Lord Kathumi is basically coming in to help you understand where you stand in the universe. And he's definitely, what I'm hearing, not here to force anything. He's also wanting to remind you that the just because you have the illusion of control, that doesn't actually mean you have control. <laughs> and the universe is definitely using the month of December, with the I Ching especially, to say, you don't have control, but you do have the universe guiding you and supporting you. So Lord Kothumi is definitely coming in to work within those contexts and energies of guiding you, helping you understand there's times when things are not going to be as simple as a straight line, but that's okay. And you also are talking about waking up new energies, new uh, aspects of yourself, light bodies, connecting into a galactic, more uh, of a galactic consciousness, light grid, however you want to see that. So be open to a lot of the new things. This first week, you definitely could have a little bit more intensity with your dreams, um, and your gut instincts could be a little bit stronger, but it's also, you may have a need to pull away because of that going on. So if you spend a little quiet time alone, go with that this first week. Your um, message from source is animal bond, stand up for all animals. I'm hearing with this one that this is going to be a time where your pets, your um, familiars, if you will, are going to be very, very, very important to you. Even if it's not a house pet, like if, like one, um, one of the places that I've lived, there were great horned owls actually outside my window. There was humongous willow tree and these great horned owls that would sit out there and all night long they would hoot and just, it was the most soothing sound, very deep. They're a lot louder than you think. Um, but what I'm hearing with this one is Lord Kothumi is coming in to help remind you that things are not always what they seem, but your animal guides and the message from source is that's why we have pets that's why we have these animals around us it's to encourage our sense of humor it's in to encourage us to be more free and more open the birds of the sky plan for the winter but it's not a conscious thought it's what happens this is what they do the bears when they go to hibernate they just feel hungry they're not exactly they're not planning like sitting down i have to eat this many pounds each day it's what happens they're going with the flow and so looking to those animal connections is really going to be supportive but also your animals are there to help remind you to have a sense of humor and to enjoy the moment in life your lesson or challenge from the tarot is number 20 with judgment there is some energy of balance and it's interesting that you have two 20s here you've got Kathumu, Kathumi, and you also have judgment um, so 20 could be an important number for you. Also, this is a card looking for balance. You're rising above the chaos and the blindness of just forcing things. And this will be this way. When you step into judgment, you know when the time to act is and when the time to step back is. And this card is really saying, find your balance. Your judgment should be from a neutral standpoint, and your judgment should also be in an aligned position. When we look at judgment in like a legal standpoint, supposedly, <laughs> they're supposed to be looking at it from neutrality. What are you bringing forward, weighing the pros and cons, and making decisions based on that? And that is the energy that's, they said they're being, you're being called for a lesson on this first week. So see how that plays out for you in that first week. Your second week's guide or guardian is number f four <laughs> with Father Time. Father Time is, you could say, is also the, a Kronos type energy where the energy of time, it moves, it goes through its phases. Father Time is coming forward to tell you that it doesn't really matter so much what your long-term goals and this is my windows and these are the slots of time. That's irrelevant. That is 100% irrelevant. Father Time is saying, it's going to happen when it's meant to happen. You can make every map, you can plan out 5, 10, 20 year plans, and I will guarantee you, Father Time guarantees you, that those will never play out the way you think. Will not happen. Because time is very fluid, 
things change, your five-year plan might happen in three months. Then what happens? But your 10-year plan might take 15 years. So time is not something that is yours to control or yours to command is what I'm hearing. And the second week, it's really going to say, allow things to happen when they're meant to happen for your spiritual journey. That timeline, you don't have to say in. And Father Time is saying, it's okay. You don't have to push and fight about it. This is just a reminder that this is how things actually play out. You can make your plans all day long, but the reality is things are going to happen in the proper time based on celestial and divine timing, not so much on our physical time. Your message from Source, our angel of miracles. Open your heart and expect miracles. Miracles come from the unknown. Miracles come from the miraculous. When you really open your heart to God, Source Divine, to your guides and guardians, and you offer up your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, and ask for the guidance of what to do next, the next step, the miraculous can occur in ways you've never imagined. Things that would could take years can happen that quick. Things that were blocks that you just could not get overcome on your own suddenly melt away. So the message from Source is Father Time's coming in to let you know you don't have as much say in your time frame as you think, but the angels of miracle are com- miracles are coming in to say, but that's not a bad thing. That actually works out in your favor because when you release the control over when things happen, it allows the universe to work and conspire in your favor And that's when the miracles happen. Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the king of swords. I have to edit this one just a little bit. And what I'm getting from this is it's time to cut away that illusion, that illusion of I am the one who commands all. You command a certain amount, yes, but that is not always the case. The king of swords has done a great many things. He has conquered a great deal. And he has everything that he's ever wanted. He's got his authority. He's got the uh, person of his dreams. There's all of these powerful things that have come around. But he knows that it's because he has cut the illusions and allowed the universe to work in his favor. I'm also hearing with this particular King of Swords energy right for this week is the rewards that you're going to get are going to be because of your hard work, your intellectual focus, and the ability to see through and work around problems because fire you've got a very unique talent is what i'm hearing for this month coming up to this month where you've done a lot of big things there's a lot of big things yet to happen but this so far the first two weeks it's all about are you willing to let it happen and let the universe conspire for you so let's take a peek at our third week here real quick And our third week's guide or guardian is the Magic and Manifestation. It's number seven in this deck. Magic and Manifestation dragons are coming forward to say, when you let go of, I have to be the one in control, magic just happens. You're able to manifest things when you release the, this is how it has to be mindset to say, this is what I'm at, where are we headed next? When you go into that mind's frame, it allows the mysterious and the magical to settle more strongly with you, and that's the uh, energy that's coming in. And you don't have, if you don't like the word magic, you can substitute it for just the manifestation part. But it's really about you're setting your goals, you're doing your part. That's the magic. You're doing that part. The manifestation is what comes next. So you are doing your part, but you're also allowing the universe to do their part. And that's where the miraculous really kicks in for you. But it's not going to be in a way that you're in control of. You're setting your goals, that you're in control of that. But how things manifest, that is not your domain. And that's what they're wanting to bring forward. So your message from Source for this third week is the dove taking a leap of faith. You have to take a leap of faith whenever you start putting out goals, whenever you start putting out uh, manifestations and affirmations. You're setting yourself up for miraculous things but you can't do that unless you take that leap of faith of okay i'm setting my goal this is what it is i'm going to hand it over to you universe you deal with it what's my next step that's a leap of faith it may not seem like it in the moment it might seem pretty simple 
but you're having faith that the universe is working with you, that God's source divine has on your side. And when you are able to step into that, as it says in the biblical uh, stories, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard, that's a tiny little thing, by the way, you can move mountains. When you have the faith to know that what you're saying and what you're setting up is in good hands, in God hands, however you want to see that, things can happen rather rapidly, but they're not going to happen in a way that you would have thought in the first place. And <laughs> after living my life as long as I have, and the things that I've learned over the years, it's generally best to set your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, and be precise. Don't let be willy-nilly, set specifics. But once you've set them, let them go to the universe and let God's source divine figure it out because it's always going to be a lot more interesting on the ride that way. Um, <laughs> your lesson or challenge is the two of pentacles. There is a little bit of a dreamy naiveness, but there's also, if you look at her face, you can see it very well. There's almost a little bit of an attitude like, so you want me to give this up and you don't want me to have any say in it? That's okay, but not really. And what they're saying with for the lesson or the challenge here is it's okay to not be okay with it but still allow it to happen that's where with I Ching it talks about a, an illness but not doing anything about it that's this you might not be happy about what's going on at points of this month but it's best to not try to correct it just let it go it's not really it's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things is what I'm hearing and that's where yeah you don't want to let go of that control and you're a little bit skeptical, does the universe really have my best interests at heart? And what I'm hearing is, yes, it does. This is a little bit of a growth period for you. So there's some things that, you know, sort through some of that. <laughs> uh, not bad, just that's what they're saying. Your um, guide or guardian for the fourth week is number 12 with singled. And I'm not sure, so we'll take a peek in the book on this one. But it's kind of a cool looking dragon. My first impression is that there's a little bit of regalness, but there's also some, I'm almost feeling like there's a hint of self-doubt that has to be overcome with this one. Uh, let's see what we've got. It is the Dragon of Gratitude. Um, it's time to take notice and acknowledge old negative patterns. Recognize those old emotional blocks, um, self-doubt, fear, or jealousy. So there's some self-doubt there. and he is quoted as saying review your life to date find the things that you are grateful for rejoice in who you are acknowledge your fears your envy your guilt or anger accept the niggling doubts and admit they are present for they are not for they are actually a part of you you have no need to dwell there for they are a part of your past and no longer relevant to your life in the moment Reve revel in the pure joy of being alive seek the positive in your existence here on earth so this fourth week, you might still have some of those lingering self-doubts of, am I doing the right thing by, you know, not reining this in and taking the reins and being in control? This dragon is really saying, instead of trying to rein in everything in and trying to lock it down and I'm the one in control, let the universe do what it does. Let God's source divine do what it does and be grateful. Look with gratitude on how far you've come in this life. The things that you have, whether it's a spouse, dog, cat, kids, house, great job, okay job, whatever, look at the things that you have, and instead of looking at them like, this stupid job, it's just it's one more thing I have to do, when you look at it as, this is the job that allows me to have the life that I am choosing, this job is allowing me to create a better uh, affirmation, a better image, something more, a bigger goal, dream, ambition to go to. Uh, when you start looking at it from the perspective of what can I learn from this and how am I grateful for it, it shifts your energy from being a little bit more negative into a much more positive state. And that's the energy that they're bringing forward here. So let's hop over to your message from source and see what that has to say. We have memories, cherish memories of loved ones. So with these two cards, it's really about looking into your history as a person taking the great memories and bringing those back into your smile. Bring those positive, happy memories forward. Be grateful for all of the beautiful things that you have in life. 
yeah, there's some niggling things. There's some negative stuff. There's some stuff that you may not like. Acknowledge that that is part of who you were, past tense. Look at how far you have grown. When you look to your memories, it's not saying sugarcoat a dog pile. It's saying acknowledge it. Yes, I have had anger issues in the past. I probably shouldn't have said that to that coworker 10 years ago. But you know what? I learned from that experience. I acknowledge that it happened, but I grew from it. And I am grateful for that opportunity to become a better person. So when you look at your memories, do not try to hide from yourself. That's never going to work, by the way. (laughs) But acknowledge what happened and look at it from the perspective of, I'm grateful that that happened because it taught me how to be a better person. It showed me that maybe things don't need to be as serious as they always are. Or it may be something along the lines of maybe that taught that I was angry in that moment, but it taught me that there's a time and a place for that type of humor or whatever it is. So these this fourth week is really about looking back to acknowledge and find joy because you're moving forward in the energy that you're focusing on. So your okay, <laughs> your le- lesson or challenge is the three of pentacles. Your third week was the two. This week is the three. Now you're coming into a much more deeper understanding of I don't have to be in control. You're still holding on to your focus, what the things that you can control, but notice that she's in a much more peaceful state. Yeah, I may not be in control, but I can do the thing that it's next on my list. But there's also this sense of regalness. There's this sense of ambition, a sense of dreaminess that I'm getting. So in this fourth week, When you're looking back to see the beauty, the greatness, and how far you've actually grown, remember that that growth has been part of you the whole time. You just didn't notice it. It wasn't something you were focusing on. So this um, fourth week, and when we talk about pentacles, this is an earth energy. So these are foundational things. These are everyday problems. These are things that you've overcome, you've grown from, and you're you're becoming more okay with where you're at. You're still not fully where you want to be, but you're getting more understanding as to how to achieve that. But you also are coming to that understanding of going with the flow might be uncomfortable at times, but it's actually for the better. So let's take a peek at our last week here. We have number three in this deck and it is transformation three is a sacred number transformation is what this month is about you're releasing control when you look at a caterpillar and they build their uh, cocoon are they in control once they're inside not really that's when god source divine's intuitive plan that's the plan of nature kicks in they put do their part and nature takes care of the rest and what i'm hearing for this last week's guide the guides coming forward you do your part, you build your cocoon, you set that goal, you set that dream, you set that ambition. Let the universe do what it does. You might feel like a puddle of goo at one point. We all do. <laughs> but you're going to come out of it shining. You're going to come out probably in a better place than what you originally thought because you have learned set the goal, do the next step. Universe fills it in with all of its amazingness and magic and the guide wants you to understand that yeah you might go through those I feel like a pile of goo periods but it's because you're being reborn you're being reconstructed you're being adjusted you're integrating the lessons that you have been striving so hard to gain now it's time to put them into practice and that's the energy that's coming forward in this fifth week your message from source is competition summon the courage and self-confidence when you are able to step into that higher frequency when you're going through those periods of transformation it can be scary but but that's where the self-esteem comes in that's where the courage to keep going forward is competition in my personal opinion and what i'm hearing as well but in my opinion uh, competition is what we do to improve We push against each other to grow and become stronger. It's not to say, I'm better than you. It's to say, I'm better than I was. You're not in competition with anybody outside of yourself, just just so we're clear. (laughs) You're going to fight with the Joneses all day long. You're never going to win. 
But what you can do is be in competition. Use them to sharpen you. Then you're sharpening them, but you're also helping yourself out. Your, your competition is with your own history, your own past. As you go forward through this month of December, by the end of the month, they're wanting you to understand that the things that you have wanted the entire time have always been within your grasp, but you've been in competition with your future, when in reality, you need to look to your past and find out what do I need to sort through to be able to move forward. Your competition has always been with yourself. So your uh, <laughs> lesson or challenge for the last week is the Knave of Chalices. It's going to be a bit of a challenge sorting through your emotions this last week. It's going to be a lot of lessons, a lot of growth. It's going to be an interesting month because this last week is that period between Christmas and New Year's. So there's going to be this weird uh, dichotomy of, I have free time. I've got people all around me. What am I going to do? What they're saying is this is the week to really watch the emotions. The lesson is going to say you're transforming, you're changing, you're starting to understand that you don't have to be in control of everything. It's not an easy thing to do for any of us, but that's where we're at. But the emotional aspect of it with this knave of chalices, he's not a knight, he's not out charging to save the world. He's in a position where he can actually contemplate and think about things. He's in a position to focus on what's going on inside. With the uh, chalices, it's the emotional state. So you have this beautiful gift given to you this last week of December to look inside, look to your past and see what's going on because you're in a situation where everything is changing for you. You are getting ready to be propelled into a future that you've planned, but it might not be exactly how you thought it would be, but it's going to be for your best overall interests. So uh, take the time this month to enjoy the ride. Take this time this month to tap into being open to change. Keep your mind on the prize. Keep your focus on the end game, but don't worry about how you get there. The universe has got that. It's got, the universe has got your back. The Lord and Lady are not going to do anything that damages. But this month, especially between the I Ching and the cards, it's really about learning to let go, learning when to say, you know what? This isn't mine to deal with. You deal with it. I'll deal with the next step. Show me what's my next step. And that's going to make for a very fun, interesting, and magical month of December. Have a great month of December, Fire. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Drop a like if you enjoyed this type of content. And comment. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. As long as we're respectful, what more can we ask for, right? I will see you guys in the future videos.